Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Demetrius here again from OB Pixel, and today once again I'm going to give you a progress update on the good carnivore side of my branding and my progress update on the 100 days that I've been on the lion way of eating, the lion diet. So let's break down a couple of things. Since my last video, like if, if you've not seen all my previous videos, please proceed and go see all those videos. I think you'll enjoy the different changes I've been through and you'll learn from those as well. But in my last video, I did mention that I no longer have hay fever problems and hay fever attacks, which is a wonderful, wonderful benefit from all of this. In the last 14 days, say between, well, the last 10 days, between the 90 days and the 100 days, there have been a number of changes that I've had to go through and one or two setbacks, but I've bounced back again. So let me discuss those with you today. First of all, it's been very challenging because I've had travel to different countries for work, which is never an easy thing, especially when it comes to eating the right way. And uh, it's been a bit tricky because I've had to bounce between the lion diet and the carnivore diet in two or three occasions because I just wasn't able to have just pure meat on particular days when I was at a client location. But it's fine because I managed to bounce around that. My weight loss has been up and down. I've been intermittent between 110 and 112 kilos. So it's been not too bad. I'm back down to 110 again in the last sort of five days. So it's not like I've gained anything, which is great, but I didn't really lose enough like I wanted to. But that's fine because I managed to maintain while I was traveling and that's very important for me because usually I can't maintain I've been traveling across to Europe for the last 28 years doing work and it's always difficult for me because I'm going to different countries and I'm eating different foods and eventually I'll just gain weight when I get back so while I'm there so it's annoying it truly has been annoying this time I've been able to maintain and that's a great benefit it's a wonderful benefit but that's not really what I'm here to talk to you about today the one benefit that I've seen in the last 10 days has been quite unusual for me. Those of you who are, you, you know, you, you, men like myself, you'll probably understand what I'm saying here. You, I've been shaving my, my beard and so on for the last 30 years. And I've always noticed that I've always had the, the left hand side of my body or my, my face specifically has always been a much rougher or more rough sort of I wouldn't say skin, but like hair growth. And on the right hand side has been very smooth. So I've always had to use either a very hot towel uh, around my face for about three or four minutes to soften everything and then be able to shave if I don't have any shaving cream or I'd have to use shaving foam, shaving cream to shave. In the last 10 days, I've noticed a quite a big change, at least for me. In the, <laughs> I no longer need to use a wet towel, a hot one, for any amount of time and I don't need to use any shaving foam anymore. What I've noticed is that the left hand side of my, my face has smoothened out in exactly the same smoothness as my right hand side and I now can shave without anything. I just throw some water on me you know just to at least lubricate the face and then that's it start shaving and I don't notice the difference in terms of the left hand the right hand side or the left hand side and it's smooth to the shave and i don't have any grazes and i don't cut myself and i don't have any ingrown hairs which is for a guy that's pretty cool because you save a lot of time i know this is a very silly benefit for a lot of you but hey it's a benefit nonetheless for me so i'm very happy about that the other thing that i've also noticed is my, my, my skin tightening all around my body which is really nice to see so I'm starting to notice that even though I lost a considerable amount of weight I've lost um, you know I was 145 now I'm 110 so it's 35 kilos it's pretty it's quite a lot of kilograms I haven't got any stretch marks which is really quite a good thing and my body is tightened up which is a interesting sort of I guess side effect from the line diet so that's very good news the other thing I noticed, and specifically the last 10 days, is that I'm now comfortably, comfortably, only needing to sleep five hours a day. I I will fall asleep naturally, I don't know, 11 o'clock in the evening, sometimes 12, and I'll just naturally wake up at five. 
I don't even need an alarm clock. On occasion, when I don't sleep so early, let's say I'll decide to oh, watch a great film or something at night or go through a series or something and I, and I, I don't know, stay up at about 2 in the morning or 3 in the morning if I'm not working the next day, then again, I'll only go to sleep for the 5 hours and then I'll wake up. If I, if I go to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'll just wake up at 8. If I go to bed up, usually it's bed about 1 o'clock, if not 11 o'clock. And it's, it's, yeah, I just need five hours and I feel amazing because I, I don't wake up feeling tired where I say, oh, okay, I need another hour sleep. No, I, I just get up and then I'm done. And that's pretty cool. Of course, I gave a coffee and tea a long time ago, but I do notice that I, when I do get up in the morning now, I am dropping water like crazy. I literally will have at least almost one liter of water in the morning as I wake up and I'm do my old pollutions and cleanse my face and, you know, do the shower thing and everything. Uh, <laughs> I will go into the kitchen and I will drop an entire liter of water. I, I do notice that I get reasonably thirsty early in the morning. Now, I don't know if that's a side effect or whatever, but it, it is important. And, and actually, once I do that, I feel, I feel great throughout the entire day. So I'm hydrating again, which is interesting. I guess during the evenings, I am... Uh, I guess in ketosis, you know, so my body is sort of burning all the reserve fat in the body, so it is losing moisture, so I guess probably that's why I'm feeling thirsty in the morning. And I have reached a total of about three liters of water a day, almost three liters. Usually it's about two liters, two and a half liters, which is not bad, it's pretty decent. So those are very interesting sort of benefits. I also have noticed that I've changed the way I eat. My routine is no longer just once a day, and having a very large meal like a large two large steaks or whatever or one massive large steak i don't know i don't necessarily do that anymore i will drop two different meals but i'll do it one first thing in the morning when i get up a very small amount of meat or mince or whatever and then i'll have another smaller meal again another steak say around midday three o'clock four o'clock in the afternoon i've noticed that my the break of the food intake can slightly change the one week i do once a week once a day eating the next week i'll do twice a day eating it's sort of fluctuating which is really interesting now those are the main benefits sorry about the microphone um so that's the interesting side of things now i've had a couple of setbacks because i've had to travel in some occasions i've had to drop to the carnivore diet so i've had to include dairy products like milk cheese yogurt in some cases, I even included pork, bacon, and, and eggs as well. Um, I've noticed that with eggs, I don't have any issues. I don't have any side effects. I don't feel any different the next day or the following day. No difference. There's no changes in weight loss or weight gain, so that's not a problem. So eggs are not an issue. I did notice the difference with cheese, and I noticed the difference with milk. Th those just don't work for me, Th for my body type. They just don't. I, I noticed that as soon as I have either... Uh, cheese and milk or anything like that during the day i do notice that one i don't feel so great the next day and then two i do put on weight or more importantly i just it just doesn't work for me i just feel something's off yogurt's not so bad interestingly enough but milk and cheese is an interesting one i have added uh pepper and of course i've always had my salt but i've changed the salt i've moved away from from himalayan salt and i've gone on to celtic salt it just tastes better and, I th and it's also a better salt. And I've also noticed that uh, with regards to the uh, extra condiments and whatever, I have, apart from pepper, I've added garlic in some occasions when I'm, when I'm cooking a steak and butter, obviously. But I've noticed that I cannot add onions. I've tried to add onions once in the last sort of three weeks and I just can't. Onions don't work for me. Not only do they make me feel terrible, I don't know, I'll just get bloated. It's terrible. It's a terrible thing. So for me, onions don't work. Not anymore. They used to, but not anymore. So that's that's the main sort of drop that I've had in carnivore. And I, basically the last five days, I've jumped back up to the lion way of eating. So it's just been red meat and salt, and that's it. And I feel fantastic, and it's balanced back down to 110 kilograms. So I'm pretty happy with it. Is it my optimal condition? No, of course not. My aim is to get to 90 kilograms. That's my aim because if I can get to 90 or even 89 kilos, that would be what I weighed when I was a Latin American dance champion at the age of 21. Yes, I used to dance when I was younger. And I was 
you know, because I was a rugby player, I've got really muscular legs, so that weight can never go down to 70 kilos. So I'm always going to be around the 90 kilogram, 85 to 90 kilos. If I can hit 90 kilograms and I've achieved my goal that I needed to achieve. So I'm about 20 kilograms out. Now, I know how to get there and it's going to always be the more difficult task. Unfortunately, though, because I started feeling better and I started feeling happier and I started trying to go for a workout and I did a little bit of a run the other day, like two weeks ago. I slightly misstepped in one of the locations I was at and I have always had, you know, since my dancing days ended, I started getting weaker ankles because I had all this extra weight I had to deal with. And unfortunately, my ankles got weaker over time. And I, I wouldn't say I fractured my ankle, but I definitely have hurt my big toe on my foot. And it was problematic for the last two to three weeks. And I've had to sit at home and nurse the foot and ice pack it and all that. I've only had to take anti-inflammatories for the first three days and then I was okay. So that's been a bit of a setback, but it hasn't changed the way I feel in terms of the, the, the way I'm eating. It didn't alter the way I'm eating the line diet, so I'm pretty happy with it. Now, the other update I wanted to give everybody, of course I am working on the website, it's just taking a little longer than I expected, but Good Carnivore will be live soon, and I'm going to have all sorts of things on there to help people. But I've also noticed, you know, since I got monetized with a YouTube channel, which I want to thank everybody who's been watching and has been supporting me and has subscribed, thank you. It's all because of you that I even got to the stage of even monetizing uh, the channel and even getting 4,000 and plus subscribers, which is a wonderful feeling. So thank you for that. And I've and I've always tried to make a channel, well, when I first started, I tried to make a channel that's to do with technology and to do with media, because, you know, my career is, which is a very successful career, has always been cybersecurity, digital forensics, a consultant in the field. I'm an online and, and on-site uh, cybersecurity instructor as well so I've always had that as a career and, I, and I'm also an author and I've written books for kids and I've written novels so I've always been successful with it at least with novels recently I've been quite successful as well and my, 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 my channel I wanted to always be technology and media and the intersection between technology and media together but since I started this lion diet exactly 100 days ago to the day I realized that actually I've been doing exceptionally well in my career for the last 30 odd years that I've been in the UK and I am quite happy and successful with everything I'm doing technology wise and yes I can make technology videos and I can make media videos in YouTube on YouTube and I can do all that kind of stuff as a career but I don't want to concentrate on those because there's so many other people as well that are making wonderful videos in technology. I mean, I'll take a point in case like Network Chuck is one of them and Bombay, I think from Australia or New Zealand. He's incredible. Could be South African as well. But more importantly, the, 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 there's some great channels out there that concentrate on these things. So I could, I could always do those kind of videos, but I don't really want to concentrate around technology because that's my career. You know, it's what I do for a living. I could do the intersection between that and media, but it's not enough. And, and I love media, I love pop culture, I love comics, I love the film industry. Uh, well, at least not today, the way the film industry is, but I love all the aspects of entertainment. But I, as soon as I started doing this 100 day, well, this challenge, and now that I've reached 100 days, I realize I need to add another element to this YouTube channel, which is this health that I'm going through, this health change, this dramatic change I've been going through, because I no longer need to talk about something without knowing about it only, like so many YouTubers do, you know, I'm not blaming everybody, but I'm just saying, YouTubers and TikTokers, you know, you could go online, you can talk about technology, but you'll say you're an expert, but you've had one or two years experience, really, seriously, I've had 36 years experience in, in this field, I think I'm pretty much an expert in what I do in technology, but can I, can I be an expert in nutrition? No. Could I be an expert in the lion diet and carnivore diet? No. I didn't know anything about it 100 days ago. Um, so I can only talk about something that I've experienced. And I can safely say now that the last 100 days, I've learned a lot. I want to thank Kerry from Homestead. 
Dr. Berry, Dr. Chafee, Dr. Baker. There's so many people that have helped me along the way and guided me in this because I never expected, first of all, to see these kind of results. I just never did. I, I only did this to recover from a, a first degree burn that I received in my hand, thinking I would give myself the best chance. If you go back and you see all my videos, I talk about this the best chance of recovering, and now I realize, you know what, to be completely successful in everything in life, you've got to first deal with your health, because I've been successful with everything else, financially and everything else in my career, but I've let myself down physically the last 30 years, not mentally, mentally I've always been a strong person, and, and I've always had that, but and, and now I'm even stronger now, now that I'm physically better. So first you've got to get the physical side because I let my physical side down. So basically I've let myself down for the last 30 years, which is terrible. I've lost 30 years of being able to not just succeed in everything I've done outside of being healthy, but to even be even better than that because my health wasn't 100% right. If it was 100% right, Today, I would be even more successful in everything I do. I know that for a fact. So it's a shame. I've lost my 30 years, but it doesn't mean it's over. So what I've noticed that as now I'm going to start bringing in the health aspect to this because people need to get physically right first and then mentally right and then spiritually right. <laughs> it's spilling is what a word so you got to get spiritually right if you get all three of those working together in synergy there is nothing in the world you cannot achieve nothing if one of those pillars is missing in your life it's gonna compromise what you're trying to do you may be successful at something but you may not achieve the real results you really want to achieve you know if you're not mentally correct you're not going to be able to physically get to the right place if you're not physically correct you're not going to be able to get mentally in the right place and when you're not spiritually correct you can't do anything really you, you can just bounce around the world and not do much whether you believe in Allah and you're a Muslim whether you're Christian whether you're agnostic whether you're Jewish whether you Hindi whether you atheist does it matter no it matter what matters is your spirituality your mental health and your physical health must be in tune, must be working correctly. Because then you're giving your body, your human side, your, your mental capacity, your soul, everything that's making you work today, the best possible chance to succeed in anything you do in life. So the fact that I've lost my last 30 years doesn't mean I'm ending this off and I'm done. No, no, no. Because I want to have an incredible next 50 years. No, I don't want to die young. I would love to, you know, reach the age of 100 and say, yep, you know, have no regrets. Yeah, I lost my 30 years that I did, but it managed to put me in a position where I've now gained so much, so much knowledge and so much understanding of myself that I enjoyed the rest of the 50 years. And I'd love to get to the age of 100. Um, at the end of the day, I don't want to be at the age of uh, 78 or, or 80 or whatever and then feeling like I'm about to leave, you know about to die that's terrible it's a terrible th thought process you know you want to enjoy your twilight years and i believe now i finally have myself to the point where i can truly enjoy everything in life so my point is you got to get all those three those three things right so that's what i'm aiming to do in my channel i want to talk about technology but in a very different way and how it can benefit your life and then i want to talk about mental state uh, sorry the media industry and your fun and and, and, and entertainment and how that can help your life and then I want to talk about health you know how to build your health and health meaning physical mental spiritual that's all health health is all three together I want to put all of those three things into this channel and that will make you a more holistic person a person that can handle anything in life and everything in life because you got to face the facts everybody and it's something you must understand. This whole new wave of algorithmic learning, machine learning, or as we marketing say, AI, artificial intelligence, which is not really artificial, is changing the world and it's changing people. And unfortunately, companies are making absolute horrid, disastrous mistakes 
by letting people go from companies, by firing people and implementing AI solutions to control and do automation and all that. It is such a disastrous mistakes by companies that they're not going to see the problems until later down the line because you still need people to do certain things. And unfortunately, AI doesn't do, AI doesn't do everything. So, and, and, and many companies don't understand this. And it's, it's to do with management. Management are just not understanding how AI works. When it comes to artificial intelligence, machine learning, algorithmic learning, the technology and the technical side of things is easy to learn. But on the business side of things, they're just making major mistakes. And the problem is, is not just that. It's a twofold problem. Managers, directors, CEOs are making terrible mistakes by letting people go and losing that domain knowledge and not benefiting and leveraging it and helping AI become even better and getting people to shift around the company in different positions and do better things in a company, but by they're just letting people go. And the second side of that problem, the flip side of the problem is people are not being trained. They're not being trained correctly in artificial intelligence, machine learning. They're not getting enough training. Everyone on the planet should be getting trained on artificial intelligence, machine learning, algorithmic learning. Whether it's technical, whether it's non-technical, because jobs will change. Okay? And, and, and you, you might ask, why am I talking about this when I'm talking about the lion diet? Well, very simple. If all these changes are coming, and they're already here, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people in the last three months have lost their jobs because companies are just making stupid mistakes and letting people go. And because also people are not trained, it's already here. What are those people going to do? How are you going to survive that process when there's going to be less jobs? You're going to have more stress, more problems financially. How are you going to deal with all of that? If you're not at peak physical, mental and spiritual condition, how are you going to handle the massive, incredibly difficult changes that are coming to everyone in the world? How? How are you going to learn how to laterally shift change and modify your career make yourself relevant and not irrelevant how are you going to uh, still have artificial intelligence machine learning as a tool that you can use in your organization how are you going to avoid losing your job because it's going to happen to many people in all sectors of life i've been talking about this whole artificial intelligence machine learning for the last 10 years that's why i developed courses six years ago way ahead of many companies until today I deliver my courses my own courses for companies and only now this year I'm starting to see other companies starting to deliver training like this it's just they're just so far behind it's unbelievable but I noticed that this immediate threat many years ago but I never realized how important health is first and of course now that I think about it and then you, you probably understand this now it's a very simple thing the only currency that we have today is not monetary. Money comes and goes like that. You can make money and you can easily lose money. It'll come and it'll go. But if your health goes, what do you have left? You're going to have a very difficult time struggling to try and get your health back especially when you reach a stage when you're a particular part in your in your life where that 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 health has gone to such a detriment that you know you've received cancer or something like that then what are you going to do but here's something even worse if now you're not at f a peak physical condition peak mental condition and also peak spiritual condition and you get to go through the difficulties in life and all these changes and God willing, this must never happen to anybody. And you lose jobs or you lose someone in your family. Everything goes. Because you won't be able to handle it. 
you might think you're strong, but if you don't have all three working for you, your physical, your mental, and your spiritual strength, how are you going to be able to handle difficulties in life in the near future? Because it's not what you think it is. It's not the normal difficulties. Machine learning AI is going to seriously change everything in the world. Some cases for the better, in many cases for the worse. I'm not being a pessimist. I'm telling you exactly what the truth is. So, get yourself physically ready first. Got to get your physical body first ready. In that process, while you're doing that, mental health comes next. You've got to get your body right. Then comes the mental health. I know people think, seem to think that mental comes first and then body comes second. Actually, no. I've noticed that when you try and work on your mental capacity, your mental health first, your physical strength, your physical um, abilities, your, your physical health will push down your mental health. However, if you push your mental health, uh, your, your, your physical health up, you increase it, you make it better, it naturally helps the mental health. Naturally. Because your body feels better, your mind feels better. And then eventually your mind, your health and your mind starts to take over and starts to push you even further. And then, of course, ultimately, if you want to complete yourself, your holistic side of things, you've got to be spiritually right. In respect of what you believe. You've got to be a good person. You've got to do the right things. Good things in life. And I say that, you know, because just, it's just the way it is. It's so easy to be bad. It's so easy to be bad. Some of the natural states of humans is to be bad. But does it make you feel good about yourself? No. You feel miserable. You feel upset all day. You feel tired and angry. With what? What are you feeling like that for? I, 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 I talk about this very flippantly, but it's a very important aspect. On YouTube, I've spoke to such wonderful people recently with my YouTube channel and my videos that I'm making. and I've had such amazing feedback, such wonderful questions. But I've also had to field some really weird, stupid, annoying questions from people and just just rude statements. People saying, whoa, you're doing this lion diet. What are you, you joined a, you joined a, did you join a cult? What, what, excuse me? What kind of question is that? <laughs> Do you understand English? Do you understand what a cult means? A cult means that you're going to have to forsake something in your life financially so you can be part of a group, like a, like a, you know, like a, a type of cult, you know, type of organization, you know. Seriously, it's not a cult. It's just the proper way of eating. Come on, think straight. Be honest with yourself. If you're going to ask a stupid question, I'm going to answer you in a stupid way. Now, for those of you who are trolls and you want to say bad things and you want to say, oh, you're not interested in learning stuff. You don't know anything about vegetables and fruits and whatever. You know what I do know? I know that when I was piling on the vegetables and I was piling on the healthy foods, I was getting unhealthier and sicker and sicker every day and now that i've done this i'm healthier and better and feel amazing every day of my life proof is in the pudding ladies and gentlemen not what other people are telling you even when i'm speaking to you now in a video and you're listening and you're watching don't believe what i say do it go out there do this challenge for yourself 30 days do it properly. Don't veer away from it. Don't, oh, I'll, I'll do this diet, but I'll have my coffee still. Or I'll have my tea. Or I'll have my, you know, carbs here and I'll have that. No, because that's not following a diet. You're not going to go past the stage where your body gets to the part where you go and you detox. Because once you go through your detox phase and you start to feel amazing, and then you try some of those habits that you have, whether it's, you know, coffee, teas, caffeine, nicotine, uh, carbohydrates, whatever, your body will immediately tell you, whoosh, it'll slap you in the face and it'll say, hey, I don't feel so good. Because it'll know how to feel that. It won't be in the habitual stage of wanting and needing that particular drug, as in like sugar, carbohydrates caffeine, nicotine, all that. It won't need it. It'll know it's bad, but it's going to go past the stage of throwing it out of your body first, 
You're going to feel like a dog. You're going to feel like a sick dog, seriously. But then you know your body's improving because it's detoxing. Go and do the challenge. Get past that. Do it for 30 days. Do it properly. Make yourself a promise. Would you, If you made yourself a promise, would you break a promise to yourself? Think about it carefully. It's an understandable thing if you're going to make a promise to somebody and because that person's not treating you well or they've really been bad with you and malicious with you, you break a promise with them, you don't want them in your life anymore. Perfectly understandable, eh? You must only surround yourself with positive people. Sometimes family can be difficult. It makes sense. But at the end of the day, when you make a promise to yourself, are you going to break that promise that you made to yourself? That's going to be like the worst possible sin you can think of. Outside of really intense sins, okay? So why would you want to break a promise to yourself? No, make a promise to yourself. Sort yourself out. What's the worst that can happen? You've been on this planet for so long. What, what, what is 30 days in your life? Considering you've lived how many years of your life already? Do the 30 days. See how you feel. Do the 60 days. See how you feel. Do the 90 days. See how you feel. If by the time you get to 90 days and you don't have a single improvement in life, somewhere along the line you're doing something wrong or not following correctly. And if you followed everything to perfection and you haven't lied to yourself, you haven't broken the promise that you made to yourself and you've done it properly and you still haven't improved, stop doing it. Proceed on and carry on with the vegetables and fruits. Maybe you're one of those people that has an incredible metabolism, an incredible system, and you're never going to get sick. Everyone is different. But I can guarantee right now that if you try this, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, you will have at least a minimum of one improvement. That, first of all, you never expect it to happen. And second of all, it's an incredible feeling. That's going to happen because... As different as all humans are, we are still human. <laughs> we have a body, we have legs, we have feet, we have fingers, we have eyes, we have toes, we have hair, we have skin, we have the organs in our body. It might be different, but you know, just because one car is different to another car doesn't stop being a car. So, do the challenge correctly and then you might surprise yourself. Now, my aim for this particular channel is not just to be technology and media. And I'm going to do technology videos when I find an occasion where I believe something is very important to discuss about technology. And with media, I mean, I love entertainment. I love films. I love uh, D TV series, if they're very good or not. Uh, these days, films and TV are disastrous because Hollywood is in absolute pieces because of the stupid messaging and agendas that they're feeding people. But anyway, and I love comics and I love media, so I'm going to make a number of videos around that. But I'm also going to include health, health mentally, physically, well, physically, mentally and spiritually. I'm going to add all three together. Anybody who's interested in listening to my channel and watching my videos, please, by all means, do so. Those of you who are new to the channel, I would love your support if you subscribe. And thank you for doing that. If you're not interested in those videos, Please proceed with another video and another channel. I, you know, it's not a problem. It's not for everyone. But if you want to improve things in life, by all means, try these challenges out. And and my aim in life right now, and, and it's changed. In the last hundred days, I realized I need to get back the 30 years that I lost. And the only way to do that is to buy time back. And there's only one thing you can do, and that is to get your health right. Because without health, you have nothing. Without spiritual health, you, you are nothing. Not you have nothing. You are nothing. And without mental health, it's all in danger. So you've got to get all three to work together. And I'm going to concentrate on making videos that will help people. If it helps me and it helps at least one other person, job done. I feel good about it. Because my aim now in life is don't say it. Do it. Plain and simple. Don't say it. Do it. Because the proof is in the pudding. Plain and simple. So I want to thank everybody for listening and watching me today in my video. I know it was a long, lengthy video. Uh, you know, it's one of these things. My apologies if you've spent a long time watching this and you're not happy. If you are happy with the videos, 
please go ahead and uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you listening to me. As you can see, I don't script any videos. I'm not watching any teleprompter. That's just a normal camera. I just talk from the heart. I'm honest. And at the end of the day, if you have any queries, any questions, if I'm able to answer them, I will. If I'm not, I will send you on to the right person who can answer those questions. So please give me comments in the video. I always appreciate communicating with people. I enjoy helping others because it makes me feel good as well because that's what I believe people need to do. They need to be helpful. You get more fulfillment from helping someone than just helping yourself. Always in life. It's a it's a motto that everyone should have because in the world will be a better place. So thank you once again. My name is Demetrius and I'm signing out.